Yeah, I agree. Writing these concluding statements can be really hard, especially if you don't have the full test in front of you, I think. So here's, here's uh, from page 148 in the textbook. Here's three examples. And I'm going to just show you how I, I would do something like this. So first off, I would write that. I would see what's happening, write HO and H1. And then I want to identify the claim. That's what's going to help me know which one's the claim, which, which, which hypothesis is the claim. That will help me make these decisions. So I claim that all, the mean volume of all 12 ounce cans of fizzy pop is less than 12 ounces. So we're talking about a mean volume. So I'm going to think this is about uh, means. So I'll say HO, the true population mean of fizzy pop is 12 ounces. And any variation is just due to, to, to random sampling. And then H1 is, um, see how I said less than, so I think this is the left tail test. And then you claim the mean volume is less than, so this is the claim. This is the claim that's being made, is H1. So now, um, after analyzing data and, and, and here, after analyzing the data and performing a hypothesis, you reject the null hypothesis. So we've got a, we got a we got a large test statistic, a large negative test statistic. The p value is small, smaller than whatever the cutoff is. So this is what we're going to go with. So what's it? What's what's the correct decision to make? Well, if you look at Dr. Stevens' wording, do you see how because I identified the alternative hypothesis is the claim, I'm going to use this one here, and we rejected HO. So we reject the null hypothesis. We say the data supports the claim that, yeah, the mean, the mean, uh, mean volume of all the cans of fizzy pop is less than 12 ounces. I mean, because it's unlikely to get a sample of whatever whatever size it was, um, and have that small a mean. Okay. Um, so there's that one. Uh, then we say fizzy pop to so back to fizzy pop again. So I'll just reuse. I'll reuse what I what I wrote here. Um, I mean that most uh, that most 12 ounce cans contain more than um, yeah. I'm gonna guess. The way this is worded, without looking at the answers, and we do have the answers, the, the way this is worded, it's because they aren't talking about the actual mean volume here, right? They're talking about, they're talking about um, that, uh, that most can, so like a larger percentage. So I don't think this is exactly like this. I think this is about proportions. So I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to say P is equal to 0.5, meaning... Half the half the cans um, of fizzy pop contain 12 ounces, and then they say most cans contain more than. I'm going to say P is greater than 0.5 because that would show that would show that most most cans have a, more than half, right? So then, which is the claim? You uh, fizzy pop claims that most 12 ounce cans contain more than 12 ounces. So I think this is uh, I think. This is Fizzy Pop's claim. Again, H1's claim. And now we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We'd say in the data doesn't support that. So um, if we go look at that, see H1 is the claim. I identify the claim as H1. So I'm going to go up and look at look at this one, still the alternative hypothesis. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. So I'd say there's not enough data to support the claim that most Fizzy, uh, most fizzy Pop cans um, contain more than 12 ounces. See how that works? Now, what I'm going to sh point out to you right now is maybe following Dr. Stevens' tables here is hard. Um, so in my video, I don't know if you watch my videos at all, in, in Canvas, I have, here, just a minute. This is in the week 10 uh, overview in Canvas. I, I have, I have this and then right below this I have my video about how to do this. So these are some notes that I've, I've, I've quote unquote borrowed from other books I've used in the past. Okay, and what I'm going to show you now is one of those one of those uh, helps that are in that in in that book. Let's see, can I delete this? Yeah. 
So this is this flow chart, which is like the table. You have to identify uh, that, you know, is H1 the claim or HO the claim? That has equality, right? So if yes, you're going to go this route. If it's no, and that's what we hear, H1 is a claim, we're going to go this route. And do we reject the null hypothesis? No. Instead of saying there's not enough data, this person says um, there's not there's not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that most most um, cans of fizzy pop have have uh, more than 12 ounces. Now, just thinking back to the one we just did, well, you know, the one about uh, here, the one about uh, the mean volume of all 12, uh, 12 all 12 ounce cans is less than 12 ounces. So in that case, H1 was the claim. H1 was the claim, and we did reject the null hypothesis. So the sample data that would be the sample data supports the claim that. See how that's very sim. See that's very similar. It's the only difference is it doesn't use the word sample there. Okay, so either one works, um, and I don't care which one you use. I mean, I really like the flowchart because I get that visual. But but Dr. Stevens thing once you decide. The secret is to know which is a claim and write it next to it. And I, and I recommend that you do that um, when you do these significance tests, hypothesis tests. Okay, let's try this last one. So you claim that the average speed of cars going down a certain stretch of highway is 72 miles an hour. Oops, come on. Let's get a eraser. So you're claiming that. And I know in Route 5, they certainly clip right along on the way to school. So the mean, we're talking about means, and it's uh, 72. So this is the claim that, no, um, the speed is, the speed, yeah, I said this says that the claim is 72 miles an hour, whereas H1, we don't have any idea whether it's greater than 72 or less than 72. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use it, not a two-tailed test here. And this is your claim because you are claiming that the average is 72 and the counter for that is that it's not 72. And we don't know if they're going faster than 72 or less than 72 on average, but that, that's what we've got. So now we reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to reject this. So let's see how Dr. Stevens claim, does this. Let's see. Let's, let's see. Can I just can I drag that? Yeah, here we go. Except it's on the bottom. What I'll do is I'll just delete this. And once I have it, I'll, I want to delete this. This is one of the problems. Oops, this is deleting too much. Okay, here I'll see if I can do this. So H1 is the claim, or H0 is the claim, I mean. So in that case, we're going to look at this bottom thing, and we reject the null hypothesis. So there's enough data to justify the rejection of the claim that. The average speed on the set of stretch of highways is 72. We, we, it's, the data shows it is different. If we use the flow chart, H1 is the claim, or HO is the claim. Due to reject HO, we did. It said there's sufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the claim that the, the speed is 72. The average speed is 72. So see how this is very similar to, to that was? And then tell that it said. So I don't know if this helps. Uh, try, try number 18. It's just like that. And see, post your work in the forum. Uh, I, th I just think the C, I think, I think writing the HO and H1 and identifying which is the claim is going to help you out in, in the long run.